Hey guys, this is Eric Vasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. In this tutorial, we will be using Illustrator and Photoshop to create a professional looking logo and business card mock-up for a Hawaiian surf club. We will begin by developing our logo in Illustrator that we will then color and apply to a photorealistic business card mock-up courtesy of Mockup Cloud. This mock-up is a social share freebie that is a part of the Colossal Mockup Templates Bundle. To download the mock-up and follow along, all you need to do is share the design bundle that includes 170 gigabytes of premium quality mock-ups for every type of project from branding and packaging to print and apparel mock-ups. In addition to the business card mock-up we will be using today, we're also going to use a small handful of other resources that can be downloaded from Pixabay and Defont.com. If you're all ready to make some waves, then fire up Adobe Illustrator and let's jump in. We're going to start by creating a new document in Illustrator that is 5 inches by 5 inches in height with two artboards, and you guys will see why we're doing that in a little bit. Now, once you've done that, we're going to come up here to where it says Untitled, and we're just going to enter a name for our project. So I'm just going to call this Hawaiian Surf Club Logo. Now, once you've done that, come down here to the bottom and click Create. Now, whenever I'm working on logos, I like to give myself more than one artboard, so I can kind of just play around on one and put stuff that I want to keep on the other. Another reason to use more than one artboard is if you have several variations of a logo or any other kind of design that you may want to use. So in this case, we're going to start by building a black and white logo on the first artboard and then have our color version on the right. So to begin, press T to get your type tool and then go ahead and click on the first artboard here and we're going to type out the words Surf Club. Now I'll press Command A to select this whole line of text and now I'm going to come over here and grab my character panel. If you guys don't have this panel, you can easily access it by coming to the window menu and choosing type character. Now what we want to do is use this free font from defont.com called Fondy Script. Now this font can be downloaded and the link for this download is in the written portion of the design tutorial. So all I'm going to do here is just type out my words just like that. It's a nice looking script typeface and it has kind of a cool Hawaiian vibe to it. Now, the next thing I want to do is open up my stroke panel, which I have over here. But again, if you guys don't have that, you can also access it through the window menu by coming down to stroke. And notice there's also a keyboard shortcut here. You can press Command or Control and F10 on the keyboard. Now, the next thing we want to do here is add a stroke of 0.5. All right, and that's just a way to kind of fake it and make our text look a little bit bolder than normal. So if you don't have a bold style of your typeface, adding an outline is a good way to kind of fake it. Now the next thing I want to do is come up to the object menu and choose transform and shear. Now check off this preview box on the bottom and let's just try and enter a value of 10 and see what happens. Now it kind of gives us a nice little bit of a almost italic vibe to our font just by skewing it a little bit. So you can see if I check and uncheck that preview box what's happening here. Now I'm going to move the character panel and the stroke panel off to the side here to select my text. And what I want to do is just come back to the character panel and make it about 43.44 points in size. So it's pretty good size, just about there. And now let's go ahead and press L on the keyboard to get our ellipse tool. Now you'll see down here I have a fill color and a stroke color. And if I tap X on the keyboard, I'm kind of toggling back and forth between the two. So make sure that you have the stroke in the foreground and then choose none. So that way all you're left with is a solid black fill. Now with your ellipse tool still selected, we're going to click, hold the shift key and drag out a large circle. If I wasn't holding the shift key, you would instead get this ellipse that you have a little bit more control over. But by holding the shift key, when you create your shapes, you're constraining the proportions, ensuring that you have a perfectly round and geometric circle. All right, so once you create the circle on top of your text here, come up to the object menu and choose Arrange, Send to Back. And what that's going to do is just make sure that our text is in the front. I'm going to select my text and come up to the Type menu. Then I'll come down here and choose Create Outlines. Now what that's doing is basically converting our live text into editable shapes and points. But you'll notice in here there's some letters that are kind of overlapping and you can see the edges of these shapes. And also you'll notice here in your colors that you still have a stroke applied. But what we want to do is kind of merge this into one solid shape. So let's go ahead and do that by coming up to Object and choosing Expand, and then check off both Fill and Stroke and click OK. Now you've converted the stroke into part of the other shape, 
But now we still need to merge these letters together, and we're going to do that by using the Pathfinder tool in Illustrator. Now, as you might have guessed, you can access the Pathfinder through the window menu here, and I also have it off to the side in my panels. So I'm just going to bring this over here and then click on this icon. It's the third one from the left on the bottom, and it's called Merge. And by doing that, we have now merged this into one solid shape. And that's exactly what we want to do. But if I just bring this down for a second, you'll notice that my fill color has a question mark in it. And that's because I'm guessing because of this counter here inside of the F or on the bottom part here, sometimes it just has a little bit of trouble. So if you press I to get your eyedropper tool and then click on this black circle here, it's going to fill the shape completely with black. But now if I press command and the plus key to zoom in, you'll see what happened. It filled those counters or these openings inside of the letter F here with black. So what we need to do is press A to get the direct selection tool, click on that shape and just delete it. All right, now come up here and do the same thing. Now, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to grab that shape. So you can go ahead and zoom in a little bit more until you're able to knock it out. And now when I click on it with my main selection tool by pressing V on the keyboard, you'll see that it just shows up as solid black. Now, I just want to point out really quickly the difference here. The main selection tool is this top black arrow, which you basically use to select and move objects around. The arrow just below it, the direct selection tool, or you can access by pressing A on the keyboard, allows you to select individual characters, points, and so forth. And now that I've outlined and created a solid shape for my text, I want to expand it. All right, so what I mean by that is I want to make, make this look a little bit thicker by creating another copy. So let's go to the object menu and choose path, offset path. And now we'll enter a value of about four pixels, four PX. You can check off this preview box to see what that looks like. And it gives you an idea of what this effect does. So I'll go ahead and press OK to do that. And now what I want to do is press command control X to cut it. Now from here, I'm going to press command control F on the keyboard to paste it in front press I on the keyboard to get my eyedropper tool, and then sample some of this white background color. Now, just like we did before, we're gonna use the Pathfinder once again and choose Merge to create one solid shape. But you can see in here that you still have some of these blue lines and edges. So instead of Merge, let's now go ahead and try the Unite option from the top left of the Pathfinder. And you'll see that you now have one solid shape filled with white. Okay, so what we want to do is send this back so that our black text appears in front. And an easy way to do that is to use the keyboard shortcut command control and the left bracket on the keyboard. Alternatively, you can come up to the object menu and choose arrange, send backward. Now, the next thing I wanna do is just click and drag around both of these shapes with my selection tool. And I'm just going to press command G to group them together. So now I can move these around as one shape, okay? And I'm going to click and drag around the circle and my text group here. And now come over to the Align panel, bring that over here, and click on this second icon in from the left that says Horizontal Align Center. And that's just going to make sure that everything is nice and lined up. So I'm just going to move some of these panels off to the side here so we don't clutter our work area too much. And the next thing I'll do is select my ellipse, press command Control c to copy it, command Control f to paste in front, Move my cursor over any of the four corners and drag inwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift on the keyboard. And what that's going to do is allow me to bring another copy of this in and reduce it in size by scaling it down from the center. Just like I showed you before, if I press X, I'm toggling between my foreground and my stroke, or my fill color and my stroke. But if I hold Shift and press X, I'm actually changing whatever my fill color is to the stroke color. So you can see, now I have a solid black fill. Now that black has been translated to the stroke. All right, so go ahead and make sure that you have a black stroke set up here. Now I'm gonna come up here to my toolbar where the type tool is and click and hold on it. And that's going to reveal this pop out menu here. And what I wanna do is select type on a path tool. Now, if I move my cursor over here and click on this inner path, you'll see that I can now add some text along this circular path. So what I'm going to do is type out Hawaiian in all caps, then press command control A to select all, come back over here to my character panel, and I'm going to change the font here to a nice condensed font. All right, so I'm going to be using maybe one of these Acumen condensed variable typefaces, but for this part, you guys can use basically any clean sans serif 
uh, condensed typeface. All right, something bold, clean, easy to read, like that. Okay, and maybe we'll go for like a bold version here. And I'll grab my eyedropper tool and sample the white background just to change the color. Then click on my selection tool up here. And I'm gonna to come to my character panel once again and make this about 12 points in size with a tracking setting of about 500. So I wanna space those letters out quite a bit. All right, now what I'm gonna do is grab my selection tool, move my cursor over any of the four corners of the bounding box and just rotate it a bit so that I can kind of, you know, have it nice and centered above the type here. Now I'm gonna select both the ellipse and the text on a path shape and move my cursor over the, any of the four corners and click and drag inwards a bit more to scale this down. All right, and I'm gonna do the same with my text here just on the inside, hold Alt, Option, and Shift and scale it down a bit more. Now select your text again, and let's just go ahead and retype in that value of 12 points so that we can scale it up. And I'm just gonna rotate it a bit more. And all I'm trying to do here is make it so that there's an even amount of space between the N and the letter C and the H and the first word here in Surf Club. So something like that looks pretty good. Now select this circle shape, press Command C, then Command F to paste another copy, and now press D on the keyboard. And what that's going to do is give you your default colors here, which is having a white fill with a black stroke. Now I'm going to come up to the object menu and choose Arrange Send to Back to send this all the way behind everything else. Click and hold over any of the four corners of the bounding box, and now hold Alt, Option, and Shift and scale up. All right, so now you're gonna have a copy all the way in the back here with a nice kind of outline around it. So let's come back to our stroke panel for a second. And I'm gonna change the weight here from one to maybe we can try something like six or maybe even a little bit thicker, like something like that. All right, that might be a bit too heavy. So let's, uh, let's go back to six. Okay, and now I'm gonna come up to the object menu and choose expand. Make sure fill and stroke are checked off and click okay. And now I'm going to come back to my Pathfinder and click on Merge. So now I've merged that stroke into a solid shape. All right, but it's still kind of grouped with our white circle, but that's okay for now. I'm gonna come here and just select my text and I actually need to ungroup it. So come to Object and choose Ungroup, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Command, Control, Shift, and G on the keyboard because I only wanna select this white copy on the outside. Now I'm gonna press Command C then Command F to paste the copy in front, and then press D on the keyboard, just like we did with our circle. And now come over to the stroke panel once again, and let's go ahead and add a stroke of about four pixels, and come up to the object menu and choose Arrange, Send to Back. All right, so just like we did before, we're setting the shape all the way to the back. Now, if I try and select it, I'm accidentally grabbing this white copy, which I don't really want. So in order to make it easier for me to grab what's behind it, I need to lock this selection. And I can do that by simply pressing Command Control 2 on the keyboard. Now when I click, you can see that I'm selecting the shape that has a white fill and a black stroke. So from here, I can come back to my stroke panel and I can modify the weight a little bit more to see how it looks in place. And all I'm trying to do here is kind of match the stroke around the text to about the same size as the stroke around the circle. So you can kind of modify that and play with it a little bit more. Let's go ahead and maybe make it about 10. So I'm giving it a weight of 10. And then once you're happy with it, come up to object once again, choose expand, make sure fill and stroke are checked, and then hit click OK. And now use the Pathfinder to click merge. Now once again, because it didn't quite do the job all the way, I'm going to use the unite option just to take it one step further and make sure that it's a solid black layer. Now I'm just gonna click off it with my selection tool and you can see that we're already starting to get some interesting looking results. So let's go ahead and take this a little bit further and see what else we can add to it. Now I'm gonna press M on the keyboard to get my rectangle tool. Make sure you have a solid black fill selected and then click and drag out a long rectangle like this. Press L on the keyboard to get your ellipse tool and now click, hold the shift key and drag to create a circle. Now, while you're dragging out your circle, you can also hold down the space bar to move it around. And you can see that what I'm trying to do here is kind of overlap this circle so that it kind of covers the top edge of this rectangle. Now press I to get the eyedropper and click anywhere on the white background 
to fill that shape with white. Now, if I click, hold shift, and kind of move it up, you can see how it's kind of cutting into the rectangle a little bit. And this is basically the idea that we're going to use to set up kind of a wave shape. We're going to be creating some waves here that we can incorporate into our logo. So let's go ahead and create a copy of this by first selecting the selection tool, the main selection tool with the letter V on the keyboard, and that is the black arrow. And I'm going to click on the circle, hold Alt, Option, and Shift, and then simply drag a copy over to the right. All right, and then click and hold the Shift key to move it over a little bit more, or you can use the arrows to tap it to the left or right a little bit. Now I'm going to do that again by clicking and dragging over to the right while holding Alt, Option, and Shift, and then just tap it over a little more. Now, if you want to make sure that all of the, the points are basically even, what you want to do is come up to View, check off rulers here, and press Show Rulers, or press the keyboard shortcut Command Control R. Now, you'll see up on the top and the left, you have your rulers visible. So I'm going to click here and just drag down a guide and kind of set it along the points here on top. And if I zoom in by pressing Command and the plus key, and then use the space bar to kind of navigate around, I can click on these shapes and maybe move them a little bit closer together or further apart just to make sure that they are even all the way across. All right, and if you want to turn your guides off, all you have to do is come up to View, and then we're going to come down here to where it says Guides and Hide Guides. All right, so use your selection tool, click on the first circle, hold Shift, and then select the other two, come back to your Pathfinder, and you can either use Unite or Merge. And that's going to join these three shapes into a single shape. Now click, hold Alt, Option, and Shift, and drag another copy over to the side here. And then bring up your guides again, just to make sure that everything is looking good. All right, and that's pretty good. We might want to move this over just a little bit more to the right. Okay, and now I can click and drag around both of these copies and merge them once again. Now I think that's looking pretty good. So what I want to do is select the circles here with my selection tool, hold Shift, and select the rectangle below. And now I'm going to come back to my Pathfinder and select the second icon from the left in the top row, which is called Minus Front. And now when I click that, it's basically going to knock this white shape out of the rectangle. Now press A to get your direct selection tool, and click and drag around both of these points on the right side of the rectangle. Hold the Shift key and just tap the arrow, the left arrow, a few times. All right, just to trim this a little bit more. Now, once again, click and drag along the bottom and select both of those points. Hold Shift and tap the up arrow a few times. All right, so from here, I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get my selection tool, move this up here underneath the logo, and now press I to get the eyedropper and sample some of the white background color. Now, you can kind of see how this is interacting with the text, but I want to make this a little bit wider. So I'm going to select the shape, move my cursor over either the left or right handle on the bounding box, and then hold Alt Option and drag outwards to the side to make it wider and kind of stretch it out a little bit. All right, and that's looking pretty good. Maybe just tap it over a little bit like that and kind of figure out where you want to place it. Now, once you've got the waves in place, I'm going to select this main black circle here using my selection tool. Press Command-C to copy it and then Command-F to paste the copy in front. Hold the Shift key and select the wave shape as well so you have them both selected at the same time. Now, come up to the Object menu, come all the way down here to where it says Clipping Mask, and then choose Make. Now, conversely, you can use the keyboard shortcut Command, Control, and 7 on the keyboard. And what that's going to do is basically work kind of like how regular masks work in Photoshop, where your circle is serving as the mask, and it's basically setting it up so that you only see the waves inside of that shape. But you'll notice, if I zoom in here, there's a thin black line around the circle. So to get rid of that, all I'm going to do is select the shape with my Selection tool, click and hold Alt, Option, and Shift, and then just drag out a little bit just so that it overlaps. And that ba that's just basically a quick and dirty way to kind of hide that thin little line there. Okay, now from here, I'll press T on the keyboard to get my Type tool, and I'm going to click inside of the waves here. Now, I want to use the same typeface that I used for my Hawaiian text, which in my case is Acumen Variable Concept Condensed Bold. But once again, you guys can use any clean sans serif typeface as long as it has a condensed or bold style to it. Maybe something like Futura, Helvetica, or Franchise will do the trick. Now, all I'm going to do here is type out ESTD1982, and then I'll press Command-Control-A to select my text. 
Now I'm going to set the size to about 10 points and let's go ahead and change the tracking in the character panel to about 80. Now I'll press Command Shift A to deselect all, V to get my selection tool, and now I'm just going to click and drag and kind of move it down here to the lower portion of the circle in the, in the waves here. All right, now I'll press T once again and click with my cursor above that line of text and we'll go ahead and type out um, another line here. So I'm going to hold the Alt Option key and type the number eight and that's going to basically create a bullet. Now I'll press the space bar and then type out another day in paradise. And then once again, press Alt Option and eight at the end to add another bullet to the end. Now press Command Control A to select all. That's going to select this entire line of text. Come over to your character panel and now let's just use a plain um, sans serif font. It doesn't have to be condensed, but just something sans serif and easy to read, such as ebony or black will do the trick. Now for this text, I'm going to make it quite a bit smaller. So I'm going to make it maybe around like 4.2. And then let's go ahead and make the tracking about 140. Okay, so it just spaces, out, spaces it out a little bit. And then I press Command, Control, Shift, and A to deselect. Now I'm going to move this down a little bit with my selection tool and just try and space these out a little bit to give everything a bit of breathing room. All right, and now once I've done that, I'm going to come up to the object menu and choose unlock all because if you remember from before, I had locked this white copy around my text. Now press V to get your selection tool, click and drag around your entire group so far, and now come over to your align panel and choose horizontal align center. Okay, so now we have added some cool waves to our surf club logo. And we're going to add a few more elements to this as well. Now I'm just going to select this ESTD text and maybe tap it up a few times with the up arrow, press the space bar, and then kind of drag over here to the side because I want to start working on this other artboard so that we can add some more elements to our logo. Now I'll press L on the keyboard to get my ellipse tool. And this time, instead of holding shift when I drag out, I'm just going to create this long ellipse kind of surfboard shape like this. Press Command, Control, Shift, and A to deselect. And now I can just kind of move it around a little bit. But what I want to do is press L once again, and now click and drag a second shape while holding the Shift key to make a circle. Now I'm going to move this circle down here towards the bottom so that it kind of intersects with the base of the surfboard. And I'll click and drag around both shapes and align them centered once again. And now select the ellipse, press I to get the eyedropper, and click on an area of white to select the background color. Now I'm going to select both of these shapes together and use the Pathfinder option minus front to knock that white shape out of the surfboard. So now I just have a solid black shape and I can scale it up a bit just by dragging outwards while holding the shift key. And now what I want to do is come up to the object menu and choose path, offset path, and type in negative four pixels. Click OK, press I to get the eyedropper tool and sample some white from the background and then deselect all by pressing Command, Control, Shift, and A. Now use your selection tool to select only the white copy, come back up to the object menu and do that again by going path, offset path, but this time let's type in a value of negative eight pixels, so we're gonna double it and then press OK. Use the eyedropper to sample an area of solid black from anywhere else in your design and then deselect all. And you can see we're starting to build up an interesting looking surfboard shape. So, Let's go ahead and add another detail to this by pressing P on the keyboard to get the pen tool. Now I'll press D on the keyboard to get my default colors again, which is a white fill and a black stroke. And if you remember from earlier, the way to kind of toggle that to make it so that white is my stroke color is instead of pressing X just to go back and forth between the two, if I hold shift and press X, that's going to switch them. So now just choose none for the fill and you should be left with a white stroke. Now all I'm going to do here is click with my pen tool at the bottom of the surfboard, somewhere in this white area, hold the shift key, and click on basically to create another point towards the top. All right, and then press command control shift A to deselect all, press V to get your selection tool, and click on this line. Now over here in my stroke panel, what I want to do is go ahead and change the weight of this to maybe about four or six, somewhere in there. And then if you come down here to the bottom, you have this option called Profile. And if I click on that, we can basically change the appearance of our stroke. So we want to choose with Profile 4, which kind of looks like a sideways triangle. And you can see that once I do that, 
I have now created this kind of tapered, sharp, pointed shape. Okay, and if for some reason uh, your point is going the opposite way, like if you have the thin portion on the bottom and the wide portion on the top, you can change the orientation of it by clicking this small flip along icon from the bottom of the stroke panel. All right, and you can see how that works there. Okay, but we want the point to be on the top. Now I'm going to use my selection tool to click and drag around the shape again, and then use the align panel and choose horizontal align center just to line everything up. Now click on only this pointed stroke here, come up to the object menu and choose expand appearance to create a solid white fill color. Now click and drag around the shape again and use the pathfinder option merge to merge that all together. Okay, now I can click and drag around it and we can basically move this around freely. So I'm gonna hold the space bar to use my hand tool, kind of drag this surfboard over here so it overlaps the logo. And now click and drag outwards from any of the four corners to scale it up. Now, what I wanna do is come up to the object menu and choose arrange send to back so that it's behind everything else. And now I can kind of experiment with the size and placement of it a bit more. All right, so I'm gonna scale it up a bit and just rotate it clockwise. Somewhere about there looks pretty good. Okay, and then feel free to, you know, just play around with the scale and positioning a little bit more until you're happy with it. But something like that is starting to look pretty cool. All right, so now let's go ahead and add some more elements to this. And what I want to do is create some light rays, maybe like a burst or a sun kind of uh, vector element to drop all the way in the back. And we're going to do that by using a similar kind of technique to what we just did for our surfboard. So I'm going to start by pressing P to get my pen tool. Press D on the keyboard to get my default colors. Press X to make sure that my fill is in the foreground and choose none, so that all you're left with is a black stroke. Now, this time I'm going to click to make a point, hold the shift key, click to make my second point, and then deselect all so that I no longer have this other point coming off by pressing Command Control, Shift and A on the keyboard. Press V to get your selection tool. Click and drag around the stroke. And now let's go ahead and change the weight to maybe about six. And then for the profile, we're going to use the same width profile four, just like we did before. Now I'm going to increase the weight of this even more by maybe making it around eight or 10, something pretty, pretty bold like that. Now I'll select it with my selection tool. And now I'm just gonna grab the top handle and extend it up a bit. Now I'll zoom in a bit here, press spacebar to grab my hand tool and then press L on the keyboard to grab my ellipse tool. Now, currently I have a black stroke with a fill of none, but I wanna swap this so that I have a black fill and no stroke. So again, hold the shift key and press X on the keyboard. Now click, hold the shift key down and just drag out a circle like this and try to place it underneath the point here. And just as I said before, as you're clicking and dragging this out, if you also hold the space bar, you'll be able to kind of move it around freely. So try and center it there, and if you want to be precise, just use the selection tool to click and drag around both, and then use the align option to choose horizontal align center. Now, what I'm going to do from here is click and drag around both of these shapes and press the letter R to get my rotation tool. Now, you'll notice that when I do that, you can see this little blue kind of um, target over here, and that's basically our anchor point. So if we were to rotate this now, everything would rotate around that anchor point, but what I really want is for everything to rotate around this circle. So what I'm going to do here is hold the Alt Option key and just click on the center of that circle and you can see that it moves our anchor point there. Now at the same time, you'll be prompted with this rotate dialog box. So in here, I'm going to change a few of these options really quick or just this option really by entering a value of about 15. Now if I press copy, you can see that it's created a single copy and offset that by about 15 degrees. So now if I press Command Control D to duplicate it, it's going to repeat that again. And if I keep doing this all the way around, you'll end up with a nice 360 degree burst shape. So once it's you know complete, press Command Control Shift A to deselect all, press V to grab your selection tool, and click and drag around the entire shape. Now because these are still comprised of mostly strokes, we want to go ahead and convert these into a single shape. So to do that, we'll first come up to the object menu and choose expand. All right, and that's going to do the first step. So you can see it is now basically a solid black fill, but let's go ahead and merge it with the Pathfinder as well. So now if I zoom out 
I can use the selection tool to grab this shape, drop it on top of my logo, come up to the object menu and choose arrange send to back, and we can now kind of place our burst in the background. So if I hold the shift key and the alt option key at the same time and click and drag out from any of the four corners, I can scale this up from the center so that those rays extend a bit further. Now what I'm going to do is click and drag around this entire group here to select everything and then use the align panel once again to choose horizontal align center. Now that looked pretty good except the surfboard got a little bit messed up so I just want to tap this down manually by selecting it and then using my arrow keys to kind of move it down and to the left a bit. All right and that's looking pretty cool. So that pretty much wraps up our black and white version of the logo. So I can press Command G with that entire group selected, and I can now kind of move that around on its own. So what I'm going to do now is work on creating a color version of the logo. So I'll select this group, press Command C, press the spacebar to get your hand tool, and just come over here, click on the second artboard, and then press Command Control F to paste this copy in front. So now that I have a copy of my black and white logo over here, I want to basically just convert some of my text into outlines. So I'm going to do that by coming up to the type menu and choosing create outlines. And then let's go ahead and come up to object and ungroup this shape. Okay, so now I can select like just the text or just the surfboard. And what I want to do actually is select the surfboard and ungroup that as well. That'll give me more control over which parts I'd like to color in. Okay, and you can do the same thing for your text, which looks like it's already ungrouped, just to help keep things easy. Now, whenever you're looking for colors for a logo, I like to do a bit of a color exploration, but in this case, I've kind of already landed on a couple of colors that I would like to use that I felt worked well for this type of design. The way I like to do this is by pressing M on the keyboard to get my rectangle tool, click and drag out while holding the shift key to create a perfect square, and now press X to make sure that your fill color is in the foreground, and then go ahead and double click on this. Now what I want to do here is enter the hex value for my first color and I'm going to use EFE7B7 which is this kind of yellowish tan color and then go ahead and click OK. Press Command Control Shift and A to deselect. Press V to get your selection tool and then click hold the Alt Option and Shift keys and drag down a copy of that square. Come down to your fill color, double click and this square we're going to use the hex value 39 a49C, which is this nice kind of seafoam bluish green color. All right, and then just go ahead and click off of that. Now I'm going to zoom in a bit here just so that I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And let's begin by first selecting this burst in the background. So just click on it with your selection tool, press I to get the eyedropper tool, and then sample that top color. And all that's going to do is just fill that with your nice tan color here. So from here, we can begin experimenting with some of these colors. And in certain cases, like here, where I've grabbed this circle, it appears to be grouped still. So we want to go to Object and Ungroup It, which will allow us to then select individual pieces. So you can see now I have the part that is filled with white. And what I'm going to do here instead is press I to get my eyedropper and fill that shape with blue. Grab this wave shape here, and you'll notice that when I click on it, I can't really modify it because of the clipping mask. So instead, if I deselect everything, press A to get your direct selection tool, and now click on an area of white, and you can see that I've grabbed that shape inside of the mask. So from here, what I can do is press I on the keyboard to get my eyedropper, and then select my blue foam color once again. And now I can just proceed to go ahead and fill out the rest of these colors. So I'm going to select the Hawaiian text. Let's make that blue. Select this uh, white text in here. Let's make that the cream color. And then let's go ahead and color the surfboard as well. So I'm going to ungroup it, which I've already done, so I can select this white shape here. Maybe fill that with my cream color. Grab the inner portion, the black part. Press I to get the eyedropper and fill it with that blue color here. And now I want to select this black portion of the circle. Now the thing is, I want this to look like it's going all the way around the logo and not really intersecting with the surfboard. So what I need to do is select only that shape, come up to the object menu and choose Arrange Send to Back. Now this part looks pretty good, but obviously it kind of got a little bit weird here with our rays coming in front. So select the rays and do the same thing. Just go to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. So now everything kind of appears in the order that we want it to. 
Okay, but looking at the surfboard, I think I want to switch these colors around. So I'll select the blue portion here and instead make it that tan color and select what is the tan color and make it that blue seafoam color. I think that looks a little bit better. Now go ahead and select this Another Day in Paradise text. Use the eyedropper and click on an area of the tan color. And lastly, select the ESTD 1982 text. Use the eyedropper tool and maybe select an area of white. So you should now have something like this. All right, and that's looking pretty cool for our main logo here. Okay, so I can go ahead and delete both of those squares and now use the selection tool to click and drag around my entire logo and I'm going to come over to the Pathfinder and choose Merge. So we now have a single, you know, solid shape here for our color version of our logo and we also have our black and white logo in the front. So from here, we're basically ready to go with our logo and apply this to some realistic branding. But if there's any other adjustments that you guys want to make, I would suggest making those changes now. So what I want to do is select this tan circle and maybe make it just a little bit smaller to put more emphasis on this blue shape here. All right, and just play around with that a little bit more until you get something like that. So I just wanted it to feel about, you know, the same width as the blue portion of the surfboard. So just take another look at it, you know, and, and with some fresh eyes and make sure that everything is looking good. And then once you're happy with it, we'll go ahead and select everything and then we can merge it and we're ready to go and jump over into Photoshop. But before we do, just be sure to save your work. So now that we're over here in Photoshop, I'm going to open up this photorealistic business card mockup from Mockup Cloud, which as I mentioned in the beginning, you guys can download for free simply by sharing the Colossal Mockup Templates Bundle. So go ahead and open this up in Photoshop and we can begin customizing our scene a little bit. The first thing I want to do is select the background folder and click on this small arrow to expand the contents. Select the paper background group folder inside and then come here and change it from pass through to overlay. And let's also go ahead and reduce the opacity to about 80% by simply pressing the number eight and you can see that updated here. Now expand the contents of the background texture folder inside and double click on this replace background smart object layer. Now once you do that, you'll be in this empty document with a single layer that says replace with your background. So this is where we are going to bring in our free stock photo from Pixabay. Now this is an image that you guys can download for free and you'll find the URL link for this photo in the written portion of the design tutorial. So once you've downloaded that photo, come up to the file menu and choose file place embedded. Now here's the file. And once it appears here, I just want to check to make sure, yep, it's this wooden plank photo. I'm going to choose place to place it into my empty smart object layer. Now, once this comes in, it will automatically be a smart object. But what I want to do is make sure that it fills the entire canvas. So I'm going to move my cursor over any of the four corners of the bounding box and drag outwards while holding the alt option and shift keys just to scale it up a bit. And then go ahead and press enter on the keyboard to apply the changes, command control S to save it, and then command control W to close this tab and return to the main mockup. Okay, so now you can see that our background has been replaced. The next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that that smart object layer is selected and then click on the adjustment layer icon here and choose hue saturation from the dropdown. Now what I wanna do is move the hue slider up to about maybe 128 or so. I'm gonna crank that up so that it's in the blue range. Okay, and then I'm gonna move the saturation all the way down to about negative 85. So it's this really kind of light bluish gray color. Okay, now what I want to do next is press C on the keyboard and that's basically going to grab my crop tool, which I can then use to just drag in some of these handles here to crop the design a bit. So I'm going to move my cursor over the top handle here, click, hold the Alt Option key, and then just drag inwards. And you can see that it's cropping from the top and the bottom at the same time. Do the same thing on the left and right by clicking, holding the Alt Option key and dragging inwards just so that we can really keep the focus on the center and these cards. Now go ahead and press Enter to apply the changes and crop the design. Now from here, let's go ahead and create a new layer. Press G on the keyboard to get my gradient tool. And then I'm gonna click on my white foreground color here and change this to the hex value 5A7E75. Go ahead and click OK. And now I want to make sure that I have a radial gradient selected and check off this box that says reverse. 
Now over here in the gradient editor, you can see that we have our fill color fading to a transparent background. So that's exactly what we want. We want a solid to transparent reverse radial gradient. Now if I click and drag from the center outwards, it's going to create a reverse gradient, which is going to serve as a nice kind of vignette effect. So let's go ahead and just double click the layer one text and rename this layer vignette. Change the blend mode from normal to multiply, and then reduce the opacity to somewhere around 75%. Okay, so that's just going to kind of darken the edges up a bit behind the business cards to once again help keep the emphasis and focus on the center of the image. Now once you've done that, we can just go ahead and collapse these folders here, and we can begin customizing these cards. Now before we get too much further, I just want to remind you guys to go ahead and save your work as you go, uh, just so you don't lose anything along the way. Now to start, I'm going to expand the contents of this first business card top folder, come inside here and double click on the Your Design Here Smart Object. Now once you're inside of this, go ahead and click on the adjustment layer icon and choose solid color. Now for the hex value here, we're going to use 66A19B. Then go ahead and press return. Now I'm going to jump over into Illustrator and I'm going to select the color version of my logo, click and drag around it, press Command Control C to copy it, then Command Control in the Tab key to come back into Photoshop, and then press Command Control V to paste it, and make sure to choose Smart Object. Click OK, and then you should see your logo appear on the top layer. What I want to do is scale it down a bit, so just move your cursor over any of the four corners and drag inwards while holding the Alt option and Shift keys on the keyboard. Once you're happy with the size and placement, go ahead and press Return on the keyboard. Once you've done that, we can go ahead and press Command Control S to save it, and then Command Control W to close the window and return to our main mockup. Now let's go ahead and select the white border layer just above the Your Design Here Smart Object layer, and we'll go ahead and double click it to open our layer style dialog box. From here, check off the color overlay option, and then for the fill color, we're going to use D5D0A7 and click OK. All right, and it's subtle, but that's just going to give us a nice colored edge on the side of that business card. Now we're gonna skip this middle folder for a second and come to the business card stack folder and expand that contents. Now for the card side, I'm just going to double click to open that up. And I wanna use the layer style option to double click on this layer, check off color overlay, and use that same hex value that we used before. Go ahead and click okay, and then save it by pressing command Control s and then command Control w to close it. Now here what we need to do is change the opacity from 20 all the way up to 100 so that we can see it a little bit better. Now I'm going to come back to the top business card top folder here and double click on that your design here smart object again. Now I'm going to grab this tab and just move it over here, minimize it by pressing command and the minus key on the keyboard a few times and then grab the main mock-up file and just kind of move it to the side here so that you kind of have these things side by side. Now in the main mock-up folder, you can collapse that business card top group folder and come inside of the business card stack folder and double click on the Your Design Here Smart Object in there. I'm going to move this tab down here to the bottom, make it a little bit smaller by pressing Command Control and the minus key, and just move it below here. Now I'm going to select this top layer here where we put our first kind of business card mock-up and I want the exact same thing in this copy. So all I'm going to do is select my logo vector smart object, hold the shift key to select the color fill layer below, click hold the shift key and then drag and drop it into this empty smart object and then press command control s to save it. Command control w to close it and then command control w or click the x to close out of that tab. And you will now have basically an identical copy of your logo and background color in the mock-up. So we can go ahead and collapse that folder and now we'll come to this one in the center called business card bottom. Okay, I'm going to open the contents here and click on the Your Design Here Smart Object twice just to open that up. And now let's go ahead and double click on that layer to open up the layer styles, check off the color overlay option and then go ahead and click OK. From here what I want to do is just add some basic information. And I've already prepped a little bit of text for you guys that you can use here just to save a little bit of time. So to do this, come up to the file menu and choose place embedded. And we're now going to navigate to the freebies folder for the design tutorial. So once you come in here, you'll see that you have a few different EPS files to choose from. 
depending on which version of Illustrator and Photoshop you are using. But in my case, I'm just going to use this top one for CC by selecting it and choosing Place. Okay, and this is just going to import our text as a smart object layer. Let's go ahead and press return or enter to commit to the changes. And then we can make it a little bit smaller if you want to, maybe just by pressing command control T and then dragging inwards a little bit while holding alt option and shift until you're happy with the size and placement. Now from here, once again, press command control S to save it and then command control W to close out. And you'll now see that you have your business card info placed in the mockup. Okay, so this is looking pretty cool so far, but we want to take it another step further by adding a little bit of a, a grainy texture to this so that any of these tan areas look like they were printed directly on the paper. So to do this, we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to first start off by coming back to my top folder here, expanding the contents and selecting the smart object layer. But now instead of going inside this layer, I'm going to make sure that I have it selected in the layers palette, press W on the keyboard to get my magic wand tool, and then check to make sure that you have a tolerance setting around 32. Okay, and then all we're going to do is select an area of that tan color in here. Now come up to the select menu and choose similar, and that's going to grab everything else in here that's filled with the same color. Now select the folder here, the business card top folder, make a new layer, and then press command and the right bracket key to move it out so that it's on the very top. Now I'm going to click on my foreground color over here and choose the hex value D to C E A five. Okay. And that's going to grab a nice tan color here, press OK. And now that that's your foreground color, simply press Alt, Option, and Delete to fill that selection. Now press Command, Control, D to deselect it, come up to the Filter menu, and choose Noise, Add Noise. Now we want an amount of around 202.4%. For the distribution, leave it set to Uniform, and then check off this box that says Monochromatic, and click OK. Now from here, I'll change the Blend Mode of the layer from Normal to Multiply and then press V to get your selection tool and then type the number five to change it to 50%. Now double click the layer one text and just change the name of this to noise one. Go ahead and collapse that folder and come down to the next folder here for business card bottom. Select the smart object layer inside and now press W to get your magic wand tool. Click on an area of tan color in here and come up to the select menu and choose similar. Now once again, we're gonna come up here, select the noise one layer at the very top add another new layer, and we should still have the same foreground color selected. So all we're gonna do is press Alt, Option, Delete to fill that layer with the same color, come up to the filter menu, and this time we can just choose Add Noise from the very top to apply another instance of that effect with the exact same settings. Go ahead and change the blend mode to multiply, reduce the opacity to 50%, and rename the layer Noise 2. Now, as you can see, we're kind of seeing the top portion of this overlapping and intersecting which we want to get rid of. So the easiest way to do that is to come back into the business card top folder, hold the command control key, and click on the smart object thumbnail layer for that front business card mockup. Now select the noise to layer and press delete on the keyboard. Press command control D to deselect and let's move on. Collapse that folder, come inside of the business card stack group folder, select the your design here smart object, press W to get the magic wand, click on an area of the tan color, come up to the select menu and choose similar. And now we're also going to hold command control shift and select the card side since that is also filled with that tan color. Now let's go ahead and collapse that folder, select the noise to layer, add another new layer and press alt option delete to fill it. Press command control D to deselect, come up to the filter menu and apply another instance of the noise, change it from normal to multiply, reduce the opacity to 50%, and then let's rename this layer Noise 3. Now again, we're gonna to have to select that business card in front just to remove the noise here. So come into the business card top folder, hold Command Control and click on the Smart Object thumbnail to create a selection, collapse that folder, select the Noise 3 layer, and then press Delete. Now I'm gonna select the top Noise 3 layer, hold the Shift key and select Noise 1 and press Command Control G to put it into a group folder, double click the group one text and rename this folder grain. So we now have this nice kind of grain effect over the entire uh, business card mockup anywhere where that tan color appears. And let's just go ahead and reduce the opacity of this layer to about maybe 40% just to make it more subtle. Okay, and then if I poke the eyeball 
out, you can kind of see how it looked before and then how it looks with a bit of that grain. So it gives it kind of a natural sandy paper appearance, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and just apply a few last effects here. Select the grain folder, hold the Alt Option key, and click on the Adjustment Layer icon, and now we're going to choose Hue Saturation from the dropdown. Check off this box that says Use Previous Layer to Create Clipping Mask, and then click OK. Now all we're going to do here is just move the saturation slider up a bit, maybe to somewhere around 50 to 60 or so. 62 sounds like a pretty good number. And then go ahead and close it. Select the grain folder again, come back down to the adjustment layer icon, and this time you don't have to hold the Alt or Option. Click and add a curves adjustment layer. And you can see if I move the properties over here that the curves layer already has a clipping mask applied to it because it's sandwiched between the hue saturation layer that we just created and the grain folder. But we want to move the curves above the hue saturation, so we'll simply press Command and the right bracket to do that. Now I'm just going to click to make a point in the center of the curves grid here and just move it up and to the left a little bit to make our grain a little bit lighter. Okay, somewhere around there looks pretty good to me. And you can check it just by poking the eyeball on and off. And if you want to, you can even reduce the opacity of the curves adjustment layer to somewhere around 60 or 50% so that it looks a little bit more subtle. Now you can go ahead and close that and we are done guys. So we just created a professional looking surf club logo in Illustrator that we then brought over into Photoshop where we used this awesome custom photorealistic business card mockup that we then kind of applied our design to. And we really customized the scene quite a bit to get some pretty cool looking results. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial today. Uh, hopefully you've learned some cool tips and tricks along the way. And we would love to see what kind of stuff you guys can create with this mockup. So again, this is a special social share freebie that is part of the larger Colossal Mockup Templates Bundle. So go ahead and share that to gain access to this Photoshop file so you can follow along and start creating some awesome mockups of your own. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and for following along. My name is Eric Vasquez, and we'll see you next time.